Good evening, everyone. It's Dr. Jen Kordonsky from Optimal Spine Chiropractic in Aberdeen, Maryland. And tonight's presentation is called Happy Healthy Feet. And we absolutely care about your feet because your feet affect your spinal alignment. Um, but there's so many miserable foot problems, plantar fasciitis and bunions and uh, arch issues that can absolutely be prevented um, or even corrected with a little bit of common sense and some specific techniques that you're going to learn here tonight. So the, the human foot itself is an engineering marvel. Um, it consists of 26 separate bones. There's 20 movable joints between those bones and over a hundred muscles, ligaments, and tendons that all work together in an elegant design that creates the structure of the foot, it creates the support for the foot, it has a shock absorbing capacity, it's a literal spring for your steps in the design of the human foot. Uh, your feet are not just these, you know, stumps that you shove in, in feet and clomp around or in shoes and clomp around on. Um, but in our culture, it's the norm to wear shoes almost all the time from a very early age. Um, and unfortunately, most shoes have a very rigid uh, sole and it's fairly thick, so we're not in contact with the ground and the rigidity of the sole prevents a lot of movement. Um, and there's a lot of cushioning and padding and support built into these shoes, which at first glance seems logical that we need the protection for our feet and we need the support. Um, but unfortunately, it's those very things, the structure and the rigidity and the support that actually cause most of the foot problems that people struggle with. And it's because the, the design of, of shoes in general um, block the normal movement patterns, block the way the foot is, is designed to work. And it's especially difficult for the foot to develop properly um, when we put uh, shoes on children very early, especially very rigid shoes. And that's most commonly what's available in our culture. Um, so when the, the arches don't develop properly, the muscles don't develop properly by actually moving and being stressed, um, then of course that can lead to problems later in life. But joints of the foot, all those 20 joints that are supposed to give and move, if they're being held rigid in a shoe, then they're going to become less and less and less able to move, uh, like a hinge rusting shut, like we talk about with the spinal movement all the time. Um, unfortunately, when we're in a shoe, the shoe is absorbing all the impact for us, it's cushioning us, it's, it's allowing you to walk with um, abnormal biomechanics, and it's not causing you to use the muscles in your feet. So our bodies are use it or lose it. Those muscles, um, when they're not being used, will become atrophied and they get weaker and weaker and weaker over time. Ultimately, the arches stop working, that inner spring of the foot stops working, um, and uh, the, the end result is that we have bunions and plantar fasciitis and foot pain and, and all, the, all the issues. Um, and the solution that we're offered for those problems is more support, um, more orthotics, um, more specific types of shoes and more cushioning. and, and you know, I know that some of you right now are thinking, yeah, but I can't even walk without that support. I can't walk without the cushioning. Um, it's, you know, painful. And yes, I'm not telling you that you're wrong, that that is absolutely the truth. However, applying more of the problem isn't going to ultimately be the solution. Um, we need to use logic and work with the design of the foot and unlock it and allow it to work the way it was meant to. And if those joints haven't fused shut with arthritis, if we can get movement back in them, um, and if those muscles haven't completely atrophied to nothing, then when we challenge them, they can rebuild and get stronger again. So your body is amazing, it's capable, um, it can heal and repair from, from many issues, uh, but we have to do three things. 
Number one is allow normal development in the first place. So if you have kids or you are a kid, um, then being barefoot as often as safe and possible is ideal. Um, I do my workouts barefoot, but I work out at home. Um, you can you know, walk around your yard where you know that it's safe um, or having the, the least amount of support in a shoe. So something very pliable. So if we're talking about babies, they make these little leather or um, like a stiffer fabric booties to, to cover the foot and, and make sure that they're not gonna get cut or hurt. Um, you could use water shoes that have a really pliable sole um, to give your, your foot protection from you know, what's on the ground, but still allow it to work. Um, so if we can allow normal development in the first place, you know, as they say, an ounce of, ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Um, for those of us who are no longer children, getting back to a more norm, normal way of walking is ideal. So if you're ready for it, if your foot can tolerate it, then like I said, walking barefoot more frequently is ideal and ideally on more varied surfaces. So not just around the house, but on sand and grass and dirt. Um, and the, the challenge of different surfaces is really beneficial for the mechanics and the muscles of your foot. Um, we have to think about the way we walk and get back to a more normal stride because what shoes allow you to do is put too much impact on the foot and not use the, the joints of your body as a shock absorber. Um, if you don't have the natural curves of your spine any longer because those have become damaged, you don't have that shock absorber. If you don't have the arches in your feet, you don't have that shock absorber. So all of these things need to be worked on. Um, but when we're barefoot, ideally we should be um, not slamming our heel into the ground, not stomping, but gently allowing the midfoot. So if this is your heel, and these are your toes, my fingers, then the midfoot is right here. And that's really where we should touch down. And the outer portion of your foot should um, make contact, you know, where the arch is, shouldn't really touch the ground, but you land on the midfoot and the outer portion um, kind of takes your weight in this kind of rolling fashion. But really all you need to think about is don't slam, don't bang the heel down, um, come down on the middle part of the foot, and I want you to take a look in a full length mirror. Just stand there in your bare feet and notice what your ankles naturally do. A lot of people's ankles will turn in or roll out and you can train those muscles to hold the ankles more straight. So play around with that, watch yourself in the mirror and then yes, you're gonna have to think about it a little bit, but try to uh, notice the way you're walking and try to correct a little bit and those muscles will get stronger. Um, this is, you know, especially if, if you do yoga barefoot, you know, think about your position of your foot. If you do your workouts barefoot, think about that and build the balance and stability. Um, when you're looking in the mirror, ideally your toes should be pointing straight ahead. Um, your, uh, maybe a slight flare out, but not too much and it should be fairly symmetrical. So that could be an indicator of a spinal misalignment, a hip misalignment. Um, if one is, is pointing out, that's one of the things we look for on an initial assessment. Um, but you may be able to self-correct um, just some sloppy habits by noticing and pointing your feet in the direction that you're heading and trying to keep those ankles straight. Third thing we need to do is correct the damage, correct the mechanics of your feet. Um, of course, you're gonna need a chiropractor to correct the mechanics of your pelvis, um, possibly your knees, your, your, your spine, um, and all of that plays into this. Um, but you personally can work on the mechanics and the joints of your feet. Just a few minutes a day and two or so weeks can actually correct a lot of the painful, um, uncomfortable issues that you're struggling with and causing you to have to buy special shoes or, um, you know, worst case scenario, end up using medications or have surgeries to deal with these issues. Um, many times they can be self-corrected, um, but we have to have the, the spine in alignment, the hips in alignment, and then you can do some work specifically um, to release the joints of the foot. And once those joints start moving, if we can start challenging them, 
then they're going to start working properly again. The muscles can rebuild. Um, so this class is really short because what I'm going to do is prepare a separate video for you so that you can follow along. If this is something you need to do to work on um, any issues with your feet, then you're going to have to do these exercises every day, um, just a couple of minutes, but I'm going to make a separate video so you can follow along with those exercises. I do want you to request a note sheet so you'll have something written to follow along with as well. And I want everyone here to make sure you leave your name or a comment so that we know that you attended the class. And please, I can't encourage you enough to share this message. Someone you know is struggling with an issue or someone you know um, could potentially prevent an issue just by learning uh, this information that we shared here tonight. So please pass it along and uh, look out for the informational or the, the follow along instructional video for the exercises that need to be done uh, so that you too can have happy, healthy feet. And uh, next time you see me barefoot in the office, don't think I'm crazy. <laughs> and uh, have a very good night.